YouTube. So, it's been a whole entire year, but it's finally time to end off the Santa Claus trilogy with by far the worst one there is. This is Santa Claus 3. Let's get into it. So, the movie starts off with Carol, who is now a teacher. So, she went from principal to teacher. Not exactly sure why, but she seems to be enjoying her demotion. As she is teaching a random class for elves, yeah, it's never specified which class she teaches. She just teaches a random one where she gets to tell elves a story about when she almost had a kid every day, I guess. So, yeah, I guess it's history class? They never say. So, yeah, that's how the movie starts off with her almost having a baby, but not really. So, yeah, she's a little bit upset about that for a minute, and then Scott makes a toy for the baby and everything's better. But she's still a little bit worried about how this kid's gonna be raised as Santa's always working, and she'll be the only one really taking care of him, that means. So... Yeah, to ease her fears, he decides to bring her parents here. But not without stopping by his own next family first, because... I don't know, he, he just wanted to come by. So, yeah, they also decide they want to go to the North Pole for... reasons. And they all come over, and also they need to pretend to the in-laws that... They are in Canada because they can't let the secret of Santa get out. We'll stop them from telling them at the end, but they can't let it get out for now. So, it'll all just be bad humor until that point. So, yeah, Santa has lots of trouble right now. He's going to have even more because Jack Frost has apparently been putting up cardboard cutouts of himself and saying that he's Santa. Because everyone believes that, I guess. So, yeah, apparently this is a big crime. Not exactly sure why. And the whole entire Council of Legends need to call him in about this, and Santa decides to give him another shot if he just listens to all the elves. But of course, this is this gives Jack Frost a great plan. Steal a snow globe so that then Scott can say, I wish I'd never been Santa at all, and then that will happen. He didn't even know that this was something that they could do until Curtis told him, but apparently he's had this plan for quite some time now. So... Yeah, he didn't even know how to execute this, but then he automatically came up with a plan right after he heard about it. So, yeah. That's gonna be his whole entire role, and while I can at least kind of understand why he would want more attention, here's the thing, he brings up that he's never had a movie or special. Okay, that's a lie. I know because I grew up watching one of his specials, the Rankin Bass one. Yeah, okay, so it might not be as popular as all the other Rankin Bass holiday specials, but it's still pretty popular in my eyes. And yeah, I watch it every year, so yeah, he does have a holiday special. And Rise of the Guardians, now all of his points are invalid. And so yeah, really nowadays his whole entire reasoning for actually wanting to do all this is completely invalid, but he's gonna do it anyway. So yeah, pretty much for most of this movie, it's really, really boring because all that we're doing is seeing the wacky hijinks of the in-laws at the North Pole and having to pretend that it's Canada. Because that's funny, apparently. And all the while, Laura, Neil, and Lucy are really not making anything easier as they're just adding to the problem. They said that they would come here to help, but really they're just making everything worse. And then when Carol starts to notice that maybe he's a little bit busy, yeah, she still tries to get him away from all of his really important work that he needs to do, and instead says, hey, put this... Put this on top of the tree. 
But then things get terrible when the tree falls down. Awful! Oh my god, a tree fell down! What will happen now? Oh yeah, they could just put the tree back up and fix the ornament. Sorry. Ugh. But yeah, apparently that'll never work because a piece of that ornament fell. So therefore it can't be fixed. Oh my god, why? So, yeah, this, on this whole entire scene lasts for like four minutes. Of just Carol crying about an ornament falling and breaking. I guess that was a fairly heirloom and that she's pregnant so that could make her more emotional. But dear God, man up woman. An ornament fell on the ground. It's not the end of the world or even the end of your relationship. But apparently in her eyes it is. And Santa decides that he's gonna go mope about this because truly... The loss of an ornament is awful. God, why? So, yeah, then Jack Frost tricks Santa into saying that he wishes I had never been Santa at all while holding the snow globe, and they're sent back in time to that glorious night where Scott killed Santa. So, yeah, that great night... And Jack instead does it, and now pretty much he's Santa. So, then the worst happens. Scott is now actually very good, is actually doing very good in his own industry. Huh. What do you know? But he's lost the true magic of Christmas. How awful. God, why? It's just so stupid. This is honestly his whole entire reasoning. I'm pretty sure that he would have been fine with this. With this whole entire situation. If not for the fact that he lost the true spirit of Christmas. God. So. He stops by, Luce, by Laura's house to see what's going on with them. They're not doing well. Because truly, Scott coming out of their life was the worst thing that could ever happen to them. So he acts like he's a complete nut job and says that he's gonna make everything right be by becoming Santa Claus again. Nothing can go wrong with this plan. So, yeah, he goes back to the North Pole where also Neil and Lucy are, as apparently Laura and Neil also had a divorce. Okay, that is actually kind of bad for them. And... He sees the worst thing yet, even worse than an ornament breaking. The North Pole has gone commercial. Oh my god, how will this ever be changed again? Oh yeah, by just grabbing a snow globe and saying some words. Yeah. So, yeah, the North Pole has now gone commercial, and this is apparently terrible as reindeer are being pets and elves sigh about having to play the piano. There was a time where I thought that this movie was fun, and now just looking back on it, it's really, really stupid. So, yeah. The North Pole has gone commercial, so Scott acts kind of creepy around Lucy, and trying to get her to get with the snow globe back so then he can set everything right. And yeah, they do that by saying what should have been the tagline of the movie, which is the show sucks. So, or maybe just the elf sighing, I don't know. Either one could be counted as a tagline for this movie. So, yeah, eventually Scott ends up tricking Jack and they are sent back in time again and everything happens as it was supposed to. And apparently reading from the card was not exactly what made him Santa. It was putting on the coat. So does reading from the card even matter? I, I don't I don't know. So yeah, now Scott is Santa again and he goes off, makes everything right with his family, tells them about 
how this is really the North Pole, like the Tokyo Moms and everything, and now everything is perfect, except for the fact that Laura and Neil are still frozen. Oh no, what does that do? So, then, get the stupidest part of this movie. I mean, it, this, this film series has not been the smartest. Like, the first one is still by far the best, but it still had stupid moments with the police going after every single guy in a Santa Claus costume. And also, in the second one, we had a toy Santa that also wanted to be a Hitler like Santa. So, yeah, those were nothing in comparison to the stupidity that this movie is about ready to bring. Now, what is this? Jack Frost can only unfreeze Lucy's parents if he unfreezes himself. So, what are they gonna do? Put him in a sauna? Put him in a hot room? No. A boiler room? Anything like that? No. Clearly, that that's stupidity speaking. No. The best, I, their only option here, not even to let Mother Nature shine down a lot of sunlight onto him to unfreeze him. No, clearly, all that is stupid. All that is completely idiotic. What they really need to do is get Lucy to go over, hug him, and then everything will be set right. <coughs> what? Oh my god, how does that even work? does that work? I seriously want this explained. How does her hugging him actually unfreeze him, make him a good person, thus making all the crimes that he just committed completely un- unident- they're completely- they're unknown. We shouldn't even commit him for those crimes. None of those crimes should get him in jail. Like, he honestly could have killed them there. But apparently that doesn't matter because now he- has black hair and a white shirt, so therefore, yeah, all those crimes, he never did them, and, oh my god, how, what? Huh. I might be getting a little bit too angry about this, but you know what, that was really a stupid moment in these movies. This was the stupidest thing that was in all of these movies. They've had some dumb moments, sure, but this takes the cake. It's just so stupid. Now you could maybe give out a reason in saying that yeah, Lucy is also kind of related to Scott, therefore she might have some magic, but even at that, it's still incredibly idiotic as to how that would work and that was never set up in the least. If they would want this actually to work and make a little bit more sense, then set it up! But of course, they don't decide to do any of that and instead have a completely stupid ending where they save the day with the power of love. Yeah, no, I need to do this again. <coughs> okay. I, I, I feel better now. Okay, so... After that happened... Then, uh, yeah, Carol has her baby, and yay, historian. And, yeah, apparently they named their kid Buddy. Kid's probably gonna hate his name for the rest of his life. And then the movie finally ends. Okay, so, yeah, I might have liked the first two, as they were alright, but this one, it just feels like it was a really big excuse just to make money out of this. Really, yes, okay, there are some good sides to it, like, the sets are really nice, the acting, I will at least say they really do try, like, Tim Allen and Martin Short, they're, par they're by far the best parts of this movie. And Curtis, for the most part, he's really kind of fun in this. But, outside of that, this movie is awful. Really, I can see it being played for kids and them liking it, but for me, like, 
even as an adolescent, even, I can't even let my nostalgia for this movie save it. It, it just went into complete stupidity by the end. With just having Lucy hug Jack Frost and that somehow magically saves the day. But even without that, even without that scene, the rest of this movie, its humor is way off from what it was before and really it just doesn't work. Honestly, I think that they need a bit better of a story or maybe different characters, like the ones that we actually had before, like, uh, what was that one else name? Uh, Brandon? I, I don't, I don't remember his name, but that one curly elf, that one curly haired elf, that guy probably could have saved this movie. I think that they put him in, I still don't know what happened to him, where exactly did he go? Like, I've really questioned that for a long time. Like, ever since I first watched this movie, I was just like, wait, where'd that curly-haired elf guy go? He he was cool. Where'd he go? Never explained. He's just gone forever. And, yeah, I will say, he got out long, when the movies were good, or at least decent. Because now the movies have gone to complete stupidity, especially at the ending, which is by far the worst part of any of these movies. It is... It's honestly really a, me a mess, just with the story alone. It honestly just doesn't work, because the humor is way off. Sure, sometimes I'll get a laugh out of it, but most of the time it really just doesn't work. And sometimes some of the acting can actually be kind of crazy. Especially when Jack is talking to people and asking them to be his elves. And when Santa is talking to Lucy at the North Pole later, that those moments just feel kind of creepy, really. And honestly, this movie just really, really needed something to save it, and it really never got that. The overall concept and idea of the escape clause and everything with that is honestly a pretty good one, but it honestly feels like it's just another slapped-on clause that just needed to be attached to this just in order for the movie to happen. So, yeah, for the story, 3 out of 10. It really isn't strong and definitely needed some more magic to be brought, to be put into it to actually make it a good film. So, yeah, there are some good aspects to it, like the sets are nice, and some of the acting is okay, but really... As the story goes, it just really is a flat story with nothing that interesting to it. So, do the characters save it? Mm, yeah, let's just get into them. So, for the characters, there are honestly quite a few to talk about, so I'm gonna try and get through them pretty fast. Santa is still pretty good from what we saw from the last few. He still stays in character, and while, well, yeah, most of his jokes aren't up to the same level that they were in the first two, as, yeah, they were much stronger in those, you can tell that Tim Allen does still try, and he's definitely one of the better parts of this movie. After him, we have Carol, who, oh my god, would this woman just cry over spilt milk? Seriously, I think that's someone were to spill some milk, then she would cry about that. I mean, she cries over ornaments. She cries over freaking ornaments falling on the ground. I can actually see her crying over spilt milk. So, yeah, let's talk about her. Uh, she's a wimp in this one. Where in the first movie, well, okay, in the second movie, she actually had a bit more of a personality. Here, yeah, it's pretty much gone. There's honestly really not that much to her outside. She needs support, and... Her husband isn't that much paying, isn't paying that much attention to her because he's busy and, oh, awful things that no one really cares about. And, yeah, honestly, that, though, that whole entire arc just gets old really, really fast. Like, the very first time I saw it being addressed, it honestly just got old at that point. So, yeah, honestly, I really did not like Carol in this one. I liked her in the second one, but here she's honestly pretty weak. So then after her, we have Lucy, who... Oh, God. I hated this character. 
I really, really hate this character. Okay, so I'll bring up the one positive that I can for her. The actress does really try, and she is a child actor, so yeah, I will give her the benefit of the doubt that she does at least very much try, but she always has this look that she's always happy about everything. Even when her parents are frozen, she still looks like she's finding the whimsy in that. And honestly, that just takes her character completely out of any sense of reality that she could have had, and honestly, she's just the really, really nice and happy and cheery little girl that, oh god, I hate. Like, seriously, does anyone like this character arc? Like, does anyone like these type of characters where they're always the nice, happy little girl who dream of rainbows and sunshines and junk like that? Like, does anyone like that arc? I really don't. Like, does anyone like those characters? I honestly hate them. So, yeah, really, I just really did not like Lucy in this. I can see the actress being pretty good, and, I don't know, maybe she's gone into better things. I haven't looked into that, but really here, she's not that strong. And then we have Jack Frost, who is really a mixed bad in this movie. As Martin Short really does try with him, I will say that his whole entire appearance is amazing. I mean, with the hair and ev and his clothes and everything, he honestly looks really, really cool. But, <sighs> too bad the character really isn't. Now, again, Martin Short does really try with this. But, honestly, I don't feel like this character could have been saved. There's just a real lack of motivation for him being a villain in here, and really no big step to him, and his whole entire ending, well... No! So, yeah, I still hate his ending. Amazingly, I still hate it. And, honestly, I feel like there could have been a lot more personality thrown to this performance by Martin Short, but for what he does, it's still pretty fine, and... Honestly, he does decent with it. And so then after him, we have Bud and Sylvia, who are also known as the in-laws, which is pretty much what I was just calling them throughout this whole movie, and really, they are just sort of your stereotype in-laws that the dad doesn't really like what's happening here, so he's gonna be angry about it and criticize little things because, oh, look at that, this building was not built up to code. And Sylvia is kind of like the one who's just like, oh yeah, everything here is great. Look at that. There's positive stuff there. And honestly, they get really old after their first argument. And that's pretty much their whole entire character throughout this movie. Either they're arguing with each other, which is by far when they're actually the best. Because at least they're bringing up good criticisms with each other. So, yeah, then the whole entire thing, though, with their arguments is that they say it over and over again. Like, their whole entire argument, their very first one, is just them arguing the exact same thing back and forth. Like, it was cold, and there were bears, but it was, but why didn't you go outside? Because there were bears, and it was cold, and there were bears, and cold, and bears, and cold, and honestly, they get old really fast, if that's not the point that I'm emphasizing here. So, yeah, then after them, we have Laura and Neil, who, they even have a point of being in this? Like, really, I thought that they were going to be more supportive to Carol or something, but really, there's no real character to them here. They're just sort of there and really disappear into the background, and it's kind of strange because they were a big part of the first two movies, and now they're just sort of sidelined for this one. Honestly, I think they could have gotten a lot more attention in this one, and that probably would have made them much stronger, but for what they do here, and for their actual roles in the movie, they're not bad, and I will always say the actors do try with what they're given. It's just that they're not really given that much to actually work with. Then we have Charlie, who, oh my god! Speaking of characters that get downplayed in this movie, god! Charlie honestly has two whole scenes. Yeah. Two. Yeah, remember how he was so important to the first two movies and was actually a major character in them? Forget all that! 
Now he's got two whole scenes! Woo! So, yeah. Two scenes. I mean, like, okay, the actor is still doing pretty good with them. And for what he does, he's not that bad. And, yeah, his character is still the same. So I will always say that he is probably the best character in this. If only he actually showed up more. Although, yeah, he does still seem a little bit too joyful to me. I don't know. Maybe it's just because he's getting older or something. I don't know. But, yeah, honestly, he's fine in this. Then we got Curtis. He's barely in it, and he still is the same, pretty much a stickler-type character, like, stickler-to-the-rules-type character that he was in the first, and, well, okay, in the second movie, he wasn't in the first. So, yeah, he's still that character, and... The actor's not bad with it. Although, I would have honestly preferred to have seen Bernard, and now, yeah, I remember it. That was his name. It was Bernard, not Brandon. It's Bernard. But, I would have honestly preferred to have seen Bernard in this place, as, yeah, like I said before, that character is much stronger than Curtis is. But, yeah, for what the actor does with Curtis and everything, he's fine, and it's definitely one of the better parts of the film. So, for the characters... 3 out of 10 again. Mainly because most of the performances, well, you can tell that the actors do try, and really it's with the side characters that put more into their roles. Really, it's with the main ones that really bring this movie down, as either you get driven out the wall by their stupid personalities, or their lack thereof, or just by the fact that the actors are really, really trying, but they don't have anything to work with here, so it really just doesn't come off well. And so, yeah, for the characters, 3 out of 10. So, what do I think about this movie overall? Well, it's definitely the weakest out of the three Santa Claus movies. So, yeah, I guess I should just quote X-Men Apocalypse here and say, yeah, the third one's always the worst. And, yeah, this is definitely a great example of that. It really needs some help in actually being a stronger movie, and it never gets that. You can tell there are good ideas here, and some of them do actually come out mainly in the sets and the actual character designs, but really outside of that... Outside of just looking at the movie, it's honestly not strong at all. Really, if you want to watch a good Santa Claus movie, go watch any of the other two. Or even the Rings and Bass one. If you want to see a good Jack Frost, I already gave out two examples here. So yeah, you can go watch any of those. Really, I've just seen these characters and overall ideas done better in so many other movies. And... And then we also had the stupid ending, which, uh, yeah, I reiterate. <coughs> so yeah, that's still how I feel about that ending. And honestly, I guess that you could give this whole entire movie the excuse that, well, Carol was telling the story to a bunch of kids, so yeah, she might have dumbed it down a lot. But really, honestly, I will... I would also like to give the kids the benefit of the doubt that they could have taken an actual good story and characters over what we get in this movie. So, for the movie itself, gonna give it what I've been giving it this whole entire time, a 3 out of 10. It really isn't strong compared to its predecessors, but even on its own, it's still very dumbed down, and it's definitely just made for kids. So... Yeah, while the acting and some of the character designs and sets are still pretty good, yeah, it definitely needed more magic put into it. So, yeah, 3 out of 10, it's really not a strong movie, especially not compared to the other two, but at least they tried a bit. So, yeah, honestly, there could have been a lot more done with this movie than what was actually done with it. So... Yeah, that's pretty much it. 3 out of 10. And next week, I will be looking at Scrooge. So, yeah. Bye.